Hey guys, welcome to the layer mask tutorial series. Even though it's a very basic topic, I believe that many people struggle with bit masks, bit operators and the distinction between layers and layer masks. I hope that I can clarify the misunderstanding a little bit. In this part we go deeply into layers in Unity, what they are, how to use them in your game and your scripts and how they are represented. Let's jump in! Layers in Unity Open Edit, Project Settings, Tags and Layers Here you have a list of 32 different layers. We'll see in a second why you can't add as many layers as you want, like you can with tags. The first 8 layers can't be changed and are reserved for Unity. In the documentation they say that layer 31 shouldn't be used either. So at the end of the day you can define 23 different layers. When you select a game object, you can change its layer at the top right of the inspector. Let's set the top cube to layer A and the bottom cube to layer B. When we hit play, the top cube lands on the bottom one. There are many applications for layers. Now select the main camera and deselect layer B for the culling mask. When we hit play again, you can see that with layers you can control which objects are rendered by specific cameras. Let's change the culling mask back to default. Open edit, project settings, physics. Here you can see a so called collision matrix. With the matrix you can specify if objects of an arbitrary layer can collide with other objects of the same or another layer. By default each object collides with each other. Now let's remove the check between layer A and layer B. Objects of layer A won't collide with objects of layer B anymore. When we hit play you can see that the blue cube falls through the red one. Select the directional light in the scene. You may have noticed that light components also have a culling mask. So you're actually able to specify which objects in the scene are lit by the given light. If you exclude layer B from the list, you're noticing that the red cube isn't illuminated by the light anymore. Of course, layers can also be useful within our own scripts. Layers and layer masks are often used together with ray casts. You can imagine a ray as a point starting somewhere and moving in a straight line forward and forward until it hits an object or reaches a maximum distance. The classic example is a player who tries to shoot an enemy. Now the game needs to detect if the player hit the enemy or not. So within your script you probably send a ray starting at the player's weapon's position moving forward. If the ray misses the enemy, false is returned. Otherwise, it is hit and may be killed. Look at the following useless script. On start of the game, we are sending a ray starting at the object's position 5 units down. Additionally, we are making use of layer masks. We are telling the ray that it should only hit with objects of layer B. The raycast method returns true or false whether it hits an object or not. Let's attach the script to the blue cube and check is kinematic so that the cube isn't affected by the physics anymore. When we hit play, the ray exactly ends on the surface of the red cube. When we change the layer from layer B to ignore raycast, for example, the ray misses and goes straight through the cube because the ignore raycast layer wasn't specified in the layer mask within our script. Keep in mind that the ignore raycast layer is a special one. If you don't pass any layer mask to the raycast method, usually the ray hits any object in the scene, having a collider attached, except the ones with the ignore raycast layer. But until you specifically enable the layer in the layer mask, collisions even with the ignore raycast layer are possible, so always keep that in mind. Layer representation. Now it's time to reveal the secret of the maximum count of 32 layers in Unity. It has something to do with performance and as a consequence of that it has mainly to do 
with the internal representation of layers and layer masks. Please don't stop the video. It may sound complicated at the first glance, but it's actually pretty easy to understand. You may know that the computer represents everything with zeros and ones. The zeros and ones are so-called bits. Therefore, any arbitrary number in the computer is as well represented by a finite row of zeros and ones. And that's the point. Layers are numbers. Or better, layers are special numbers. Special in so far that the layer is always a number filled with zeros but on one position. So a layer is a number with exactly one single one somewhere in the row of bits. You will notice that this isn't exactly the truth, but it's easier to describe it that way. Okay, a layer is a number with exactly one single one somewhere. For example, this is a layer. Or that. Or this. But not something like this. Or something like that. Those numbers are layer masks. The confusing thing, layers are also layer masks. But more of masks in the next tutorial. We now know that a layer is a special number. Let's say a number can consist of 8 bits or 8 zeros and ones. How many possibilities for a layer do you have? Exactly! 8. You can represent 8 different layers with a number that consists of 8 bits. I guess you've already got the point. Today integer numbers are mostly represented by 32 bits. And that's the reason why you can only define 32 different layers in Unity. But why is it done that way? Well, this representation of layers is really lightweight and you can execute high performance operations. And high performance is needed for physics and collision. As mentioned before, I wasn't totally honest with you. Layers are actually represented by the position of the one bit and not by the whole number. For example, if you have a layer with the one bit at position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then this is layer 5, or the sixth layer. And the layer at position 20 is layer 20, or the 21st layer. This representation explains why a layer must be a number with exactly one single one bit. You can only express one position of a bit with one index. So what is the layer represented by this number? Is it 3 or 5? It's not possible to define. Okay, now comes a more practical thing. When you want to assign the layer of a game object by script, you're actually working with the layer's indices. For example, layer B is internally layer 9. If you want to assign the game object's layer to that layer, you have to pass 9 to its layer property. Of course, this isn't quite handy and you can remember names better than numbers. That's why Unity provides a name to layer helper function. So we would change our code from that to gameobject.layer equals layermask.name to layer of layer B. Vice versa, to get the name of a layer at an arbitrary position, you can use the layer mask layer to name function. To get the name of the current layer of an object, you can write layer mask layer to name of game object layer. Thank you very much for watching. This was the introduction video describing layers in Unity. Next time we will deeply dive into layer masks. If you liked it, then please support us on Patreon and join our weekly newsletter. I want to say thank you to our patrons. A very special thanks to Eric and a special thanks to Simon Zineder, David Heinzel, Melina Brunner, Robert Hartl, Erich Gangl, Reinhard Bauer and Theresa. It would be kind to give us a like and to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day. It's your sensei.